This used to be a Game Boy Pocket. But I have removed the CPU and replaced it with ESP32. When I turn it on it can do this. So let's take a look how did we got here and how far can we push it. Here I have another Game Boy Pocket, though this one is working. I have already prepared connections to the LCD bus. So let's turn the oscilloscope on and do some basic probing. Wait, this isn't right. Much better. There are eight signals, which is more than I would expect. But I guess back in time there were no common standards for display buses. Anyway, first pick. It already looks weird. It's repeating, but I don't recognize this shape. It can't even be data. Data should contain long line from a logo rectangle. Well, I'm gonna probe each one of these and show you interesting highlights. Here's my setup. This shows the first line. Yellow is vertical synchronization, cyan is horizontal synchronization and magenta is pixel clock. First pixel clock seems to be a bit off, but it is a pixel. Anyway, after zooming out you can see more lines. This is fun. Blue is one of the data bits now and you can actually see the logo scrolling. Well, until it stops, of course. Let's see it again. And here is a close-up of logo lines. There is not much to see as the logo is just a black rectangle now. Oh, and this is that weird signal from before. It really doesn't make sense. Well, we don't need it to capture the screen, but we have to recreate it to control the LCD. ESP32 contains i squared as controller that can do much more than just sound. See? We can use camera mode to capture the Game Boy screen too. Just due to the way the LCD is driven, we won't use the synchronization the way it would be used with cameras. LCD provides pixel clock only for visible pixels, we don't need any extra enable signals. Basically, we only need a pixel clock and horizontal synchronization. Well, here's the code for capture driver. I'm using a direct register access here. Anyway, this initializes the capture mode and here we get the new frames. Oh, and pin configuration. Signal names are taken from CPU pinout. I have added game cartridge, I don't like Tetris by the way, and connected ESP with capture code. Yes, this is how I do testing connections. It's nice and compact and only sometimes falls apart. Well, it works. And it works better than I have expected. ESP seems to be fast enough to pack and stream the frames over UDP Wi-Fi. Let's take a look at the game. Now there's a difference. Disabled screen isn't captured. Yeah, obviously. The game works well, it's even playable. But, hmm, first line seems to be broken. Let me see. I have loaded a different game and it's really obvious here. Especially with sprites, but even background is off. This isn't a signal integrity issue, let's go back to the scope. I can try to stop on trigger a few times and eventually I will hit the broken line. This, this is it. Magenta is data this time, yellow is pixel clock. Seems like data is changing after the first pixel clock. Well, horizontal synchronization for in edge seems to mark the valid data. This is gonna need an extra hardware. But it's only an issue for capture, we can generate any signal to drive the LCD. Here's the solution. The data is changing after the first pixel clock. So we need to combine horizontal synchronization and a pixel clock into a single input. This can be achieved using a single OR gate. Well, I have added the OR gate, let's check out the results. Yes, it's working, it's gone. This is good to know for future projects. 
More sprites and still okay? Nice. Oh, and some minor refactoring in the code. Now let's drive this LCD. We can use I2 squared in LCD mode. This isn't gonna generate control signals for us, but it works as a DMA accelerated GPIO. Well, only output. Anyway, all you have to do is generate parallel data in memory and it will stream it to the outputs. And thanks to the DMA, it won't eat CPU cycles. Well, here's the code for LCD output. Again, direct register access. Now, this part generates every single line. There's certainly a space for optimizations, but as always, it's a battle of CPU usage versus RAM usage. Here I use less RAM and more CPU power. Also, this doesn't generate exactly the same signals, but it works. Let's try this. Do you remember Capture to PC? Yes, I have implemented it to SP32. Well, unfortunately, seems like ESP32 can't receive packets fast enough. Everything is delayed by a lot. I wonder where are those packets? ESP doesn't have that much memory. And this is fun. It's still going. I guess it's in Wi-Fi modem. At least I can stream from PC. Here's the Raspberry Pi setup. And it even works fast enough. Totally playable, minor packet loss. Keep in mind that ESP32 is still transmitting this, and packets go through Wi-Fi modem then over the Ethernet. Here, these ghosts are flickering at 60 FPS, thus simulating transparency because the LCD is too slow. And it's still visible on the other side. Now, what's all this? Let's take a look at a bigger picture. I'm actually using parallel RGB bus as a GPIO and that's uh, 24 bits. Right now only 8 bits are used. What can we do with the remaining 16 bits? I think the answer is obvious. 8 more screens. 6 control bits can be shared. Oh and yes, that means by placing a certain pixel values to the frame buffer, I actually control the output bits. Well, this is a single board and I need to get the CPU out. It's hot air time. Don't worry, I can fix this later. That doesn't mean I will. And now to do this seven more times. Now here's all the treasure. I have removed a bit more than just a CPU. And here are all the boards. Now let's move on to the cable. Time for soldering. This is gonna take a while. 9 at last. And it's working. I have updated the code and this allows me to number each board correctly. For what's next. Oh yeah, and this logic buffer boosts the control signals. After all, 6 control bits are shared and Raspberry can't handle that. Now, everything, barely, holds together and you already know this red Game Boy. Yeah. It's nice and playable. And here are those ghosts again. Well, this is all fun and stuff, but can it random? Why, yes, it can. Raspberry Pi can run Doom, I'm actually streaming this from PC again. But then that allows me to do something more crafty. You know, creating a new world. Punching wood to make levitating tree. 
getting stone, getting iron, almost dying to skeleton, dying to fall damage because of the lack of food. Fun times. This is a fun game. It's called the Hennestic Min Collection, and you basically have to try all funny fails. Hey, like. Well, there's one different arrangement. Again, it barely holds together, but now if I run this application... Oh, hello, that's not a correct application, but I guess you can do that if you want. Now this is a correct application. It's a... it's a clock. Yeah, a clock. You only have to sacrifice 8 gamers to get this. All the code used in this video is available on my github, link in the description. You can now have Game Boy LCD in your project. Well that's all for now and hopefully see you at the next project.